so much tape. Ah, okay, there we go. So, not too long ago, I attended a track event at one of our local, like, uh, short tracks at Adams Motorsports Park. And when I attended it, I had heard a pop noise from the suspension. Now, what I presumed at the time was that there was a rock under the car or under one of the tires that was, like, being pinched by the sidewall and on the ground. And as I moved, I thought that pinched rock shot out from underneath the car or from underneath the tire and hit something underneath the car. Turns out that wasn't the case. What it was, was the mounting bracket for the anti-roll bar breaking. I'm gonna show you some pictures of that piece that's damaged, which I didn't know was damaged. And I've been driving with the car like that for some time and didn't even realize it until I went to go and install my exhaust system. So I got in contact with iBot because that who that's who I bought the anti robot from, and I told them about what happened and I sent them uh, pictures of the product and how it broke. So iBot was really cool about it. They sent me out replacement parts immediately. Like within two days of contacting them, I had received the replacement parts for the car, and it just took me some time you know I was procrastinating on putting them back on the car and uh, so today I went ahead and decided to go ahead and put a video together because I really haven't found any videos out there that show or describe uh, at least some of the work that needs to be done but I can tell you this in order to install the anti roll bar or anti sway bar whatever you want to call it in order to install it you do have to remove the exhaust system I myself didn't have to remove mine because it was already in there. All I just had to do was reinstall the bushings and the mounting hardware. I mean, it's not going to damage the exhaust. You know? uh, I'm not sure. da -da. Replacement parts. Yay! Oh, wow. They even updated the bracket. Check this out, dude. It's not that cheap uh, brass oh, shit that's under there. It's way different. It's reinforced. It's not a single plate. Dude, this is way nicer. Okay, so here is with the bracket, while well, the old bracket that holds the anti-roll bar to the body. Those two are those two. Those are 10 millimeter nuts, I mean uh, bolts. Here is the one that took a dive. And as you can see, there's this fitting. And this fitting is, was it eight millimeter? So this fitting was an eight millimeter to take this off. Now with the new bracket, you have to take these off and put them into the new bracket so that way you can grease them later. Something else, when you get under here, there's the mounting over there. Now here's right here, this is the end link, the bottom portion. The upper portion is right here. That connects to the anti-roll bar. So the end link bolts, are as follows. This one is a 10 millimeter. The one that goes on this bolt here is a 14 millimeter. You're gonna need a long wrench in order to get that bolt off of there because it's gonna be on there very tight. All right, so 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter finished product installed right there. In the link right there, still have to install the 14 millimeter nut. Now these are your adjustments for stiffness. Uh, I think this was maximum, I think this is minimum. I'm not too certain, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100%, but this was very difficult. Use a flashlight, that's what I did. Mounted it right there in the spring, aimed it right at the holes so I can see where they are, line up the bolts and push them through. Here is the finished product. I also put those covers back on the on the grease fittings 
so they don't get dirty, they don't get clogged, they don't contaminate your bushings with dirt. All the mounting hardware is slightly tightened. It's not completely tightened all the way down. So that way with the car on on the these supporting blocks here, it's applying a loaded condition to the suspension so that you're not tightening everything up under an unloaded suspension. Because what will end up happening is you'll end up having parts sitting in the wrong position when everything comes together and compresses. So when it's compressed, you're tightening everything where it's supposed to be under normal conditions all the time. So that's why I have these here. And now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tighten up all the suspension bolts. Okay, so I tightened up the mounting bolts and the way that I did it, <coughs> I uh, went in a crisscross pattern. So I tightened up the top bolt on this one, then I would come over here, tighten the bottom one over here, then tighten the top one up there, and then come back over here, tighten the bottom one, and then go back up to the top and tighten that one. Now, what I didn't do was I didn't go full tighten all the way. Like I would just tighten it up until it felt like it didn't want to turn anymore gently. And then I went up to the next one, and then I went on to the next one, and I made several rounds and then they finally came to a stopping point where none of them wanted to turn anymore. And that's where we are at this point. Now I just got to do these 14 millimeters and then also these, uh, I think I said they were 12 millimeters and then we will be completely done with this install. So there you have it guys. That was all that it was. Uh, I just had to put them all together, put it all together, tighten everything up. And I took the car out for a drive and it feels way different like so much different in comparison to when that one clamp was broken and if you have any questions feel free to hit me up message me on uh this youtube video and i'll get back to you hope you enjoyed good luck take care